afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm doing a, a very impromptu live session here. I haven't announced it. I don't expect anybody to be on here, but I'm just giving this a trial run um, because I normally do them on my personal page, but here I am on the page, Kathy Mill Ministries. So I'm going to give you what I've got, and I'm sure somebody will find this on the page at a, at a later point because what I want to do, hi Claire. What I want to start doing is um, the, the Facebook live sessions I've been doing on my personal page and I want to move them onto this page. So I'll give you what I've got. I don't, I don't have much right now, but I'm excited about what I found. I've been speaking about um, prophetic warriors and the wide open places of faith. And I realized this, that when God gives us an instruction when he said, or, or an encouragement and he says, um, don't be dismayed or don't be discouraged, then it's actually an invitation to be something other than that. So when he's saying, don't be dismayed, he's saying, be amazed at me, my power, what I can do. Don't be discouraged. He's saying, be encouraged because I'm with you. There's going to be a turnaround. And I know that there are a lot of people at the moment who I'm feeling a bit weary in the waiting. So I'm working on a really nice message. God's been giving me some insight and things about for the weary people in the waiting. Yeah, clearly there must be a reason. It's just you and I at the moment. So um, I began to look at, at some things about what do we do in the waiting? And so here's just a little taste of it. Um, I found the scripture, Psalm 145, and it's, it's an amazing scripture. Verse 3 says this, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and His greatness is unsearchable. And then it says, Your one generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your mighty act. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak, it's talking about speaking, of, uh, men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. And that word utter in Psalm 145 verse 7 actually means, it says eagerly utter or it means to bubble forth. And you know we use that, that term bubble forth when we speak about prophets and prophetic ministries. That they've got a message that they can't contain so it just bubbles forth out of them. And this is the same thing that... We are going to remember the first thing we have to do in, in, in the waiting for in that in between time when God promises us something and on the way for that thing to be manifest or to come to pass is remember because the enemy, Natasha, nice to see you. These spontaneous things do work. So the, the thing is that if we remember what God has done before, in, when you begin to feel weary in the waiting, like this, you know, all these questions that come, where is God? He said this, Letitia, you know, where is God? He said he was going to do this and I can't see any sign of it. So the first thing to do is to remember what he did before. So it says here, they shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. When you begin to declare what God has done before, when you begin to declare how good he is, how, how able he is, how he's been so so great before, then it, it starts to bubble out of you. When you remember one thing, you remember another thing. I've been there before. I know what it's like to sit in one place and you it's like you've got all these promises and you say, but when is it going to happen? And I really know that there are weary people out there, which is otherwise God wouldn't have been saying this to me. So the first thing you do in the waiting is remember and the second thing you do is you talk about it. You talk about what God said. Um, men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts. There's got to be something in your life that God has done before. Or you wouldn't be here today. Uh, I'm not just talking about here with me on FaceTime, um, but, uh, Facebook. But, you know, you wouldn't be trusting him. You wouldn't be waiting. Um, and so I'm really restraining myself from 
preaching my message that I've got from my next Facebook Live here because this was just a test. So I'm going to leave you with that. I'll, I'll leave you with this. It, it carries on in Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works, not just some of them. His tender mercies are over everything he has done and everything he does and everything he's going to do. We just know him as this God of power. You know, this, he, he is a God of power, but always remember his tender mercies are there. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. This is a word being spoken by the psalmist. Um, and this is what he says here. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. So in your weariness, in, your, in the waiting, are you speaking about the glory of God's kingdom and what he's able to do, what his character, his nature, his goodness, and talk of your power. You know, when you talk about the power of God, your faith begins to increase. Uh, if you, I'm sure you found this. When you talk about your weariness, when you talk about the problem, it's like your faith level just gets lower and lower the more you talk about it because that's what you focused on. So when you talk about the, what God has promised, when you talk about his goodness and all these things, you're, the memory of his goodness, um, the, your faith level begins to increase and faith gets God moving, I'm telling you. Um, and then it says your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. And go read the rest of Psalm 145. It's such an encouragement for this time for weary people. But I, I know, I'm speaking from experience, um, that Rory and I have done this faith thing for, and when I say faith thing, trusting God for everything we need, every single thing. That we've done it for over 30 years. We're still learning, but there's one thing that we do when we feel weary, when we feel like there's a bit of discouragement that's knocking at the door, we bring out all the big guns and we bring out the, the times where God delivered us before, the times where we had no faith, but the faithfulness of God came through. Because in seasons before, we did have faith. And then we prayed, and then we sowed, and then we stood, and we, we took the ground, and we did all that, you know, all the things we do as believers. And when we felt as if we had run to the end of ourselves, and we, weariness just came in, and discouragement came in, we get out the big guns, and we say, remember the time that uh, we needed this and God came through. Remember the time when we needed a car. I can give you testimonies of the goodness of God. I can utter the memory of his great goodness. Yeah, for a long time. But we, we speak about, we remind each other about what God did. We say, remember how we prayed about this one. And, and you know, and we saw God do it. And it's always, it always feels like it's at a time when, when we remember the things God did. We can always acknowledge it's we did have faith. A certain we, obviously our faith was in God, but it wasn't all our great works. Like we deserved this. We put our faith in God and we said, God, all we can do to help you in this place is put our faith in you and, and wait to hear what you say and agree with what you're saying. So um, remember that now that God says things to us and he has big plans for you and I as individuals and for his church and for nations. He has big plans. God doesn't think small. He has huge plans. And so the reason he wants us to ask him, to dream with him, to imagine with him, is because when we begin to do that, when we begin to utter the memory of his great goodness, we slowly but surely we get into line with his way of big thinking. And um, we, you know, He's got big plans, so he wants us to come to him and ask for big things. He said, ask of me the nations, and I'll give them to you as your inheritance. And here we get stuck on this level of, of you know, we, we this level of, God, I need a breakthrough. I just want my needs met. And God's already thinking way further than that because he's got all the small things, you know, he's working them out already. So that's all I'm going to give to you today. And um, I'll put up a notice when I'm going to go live again. Um, 
today's Wednesday. I've really got to keep track of the days. I'm losing track of days, but I'm, I'm going to do a Facebook session um, along the lines of weary in the waiting. That's not the title, but that's what I'm looking at and how God is the God of breakthrough. And also that um, maybe you can relate with this. The few of you who are listening to me now, maybe you can relate to this. That when you're pregnant, there's something that sits that sits in towards the last days when you're about to go into labor. And it's called the nesting instinct. And God's been speaking to me about the nesting instinct. That um, even though people are weary and frustrated and you know, maybe feeling irritated in, in the not being able to get out and do things. In the spiritual realm, God's about to birth something. So there's a nesting instinct that we have to recognize in our lives. And of course, it's a spiritual nesting instinct. And the nesting instinct happens to a woman. And there's this need to get everything ready before this baby arrives. You want everything in place, everything ready. And so God's wanting you and I to have a nesting instinct. Um, and I'll talk more about that when I go live. It might be tomorrow. I don't want to promise. Um, I just want to get a few things in order first. It might be tomorrow um, or maybe just another spontaneous afternoon. But I'm going to give it a try and post or uh, do the Facebook Lives on this page, Kathy Mole Ministries. So anyway, thank you for popping in. Um, all of you, the crowds out there for popping in. Um, I said, I'm just going to give this a try, see what happens if I do a spontaneous thing, because sometimes those ones are the best. So I trust you're having a great day. The Cape Tonians, the weather's fantastic. It's like being back in summer. Um, and anyway, I'll see you soon. Love you lots.